красиво. Сейчас мы... Ну, вообще на это у вас это программа будет. Значит, у меня там не Вот, а потом я уже на нее просто поменьше, но и тише работает. Причем степер, который... Степер это вот сейчас он там будет маленький. Маленький шашки получается, часть шашков не делает такой. Часть шашков не делает. Кстати... включенный компьютере, он будет уже длину волны и помнить. Тоже мотор начинает вращаться, да? Да, да, да. То есть калибров он помнит всегда, и шаги он запоминает, на которых он остановился, он забивает себя с памяти. Вот, ну, собственно, вот такая вот и будет. Laboratory studies uh, carbon nanotubes, particularly their optical properties based on their near-infrared fluorescence. So for this purpose, we need optical excitation at a variety of wavelengths. Carbon nanotubes have different structural forms. The different structural forms have different characteristic absorption wavelengths. And most of our work has been done using diode lasers without tunability, but with fixed wavelengths. And we can excite a variety of different nanotube structures that way, but not always with very high efficiencies. So after we do that, uh, we examine the near-infrared fluorescence of the nanotubes, both in bulk samples and in microscopic studies, where we look at individual nanotubes, study their spectrum, study their bending properties, study their motions and fluids, and uh, study the spectroscopic brightness of different tubes as well. In order to 
give us more versatility in our experiments, it's a great value for us to have tunable excitation so that we can excite a particular type of nanotube right at the peak of its resonance, and also so that we can study um, spectroscopically scans where we scan through the excitation wavelength and monitor uh, the response of the nanotube system. Okay, uh, in order to uh, get more versatility in our experiments, we're going to be using this tunable uh, Thai sapphire laser to provide excitation of particular nanotube species on what's called their 2-2 resonances. Uh, so these span uh, different wavelengths in the red from, that covers pretty well the Thai sapphire range. Some of the nanotubes absorb at shorter wavelengths, and for that we use a di uh, conventional dye laser in addition to the fixed wavelength diode. So anyway, the beam from this laser will be trans uh, transferred into uh, the microscope that we use for single molecule studies, single nanotube studies, and it'll be focused on nanotubes on the sample stage, then we collect the near-infrared fluorescence and analyze it spectrally and spatially. We intend to have this under computer control so that we can do scans of excitation wavelength while we look at the fluorescence response of the nanotubes. Uh, finally, we'll be using this, I think, also for enhanced studies of nanotubes in biological settings, where the nanotubes of particular uh, sorted NM types will be introduced into biological specimens, and then we hope to detect them with very high sensitivity by tuning right to the uh, uh, to the peaked excitation wavelength of that particular type of nanotube, and exciting just that type of nanotube inside the biological specimen, and detecting in a narrow spectral range near its emission wavelength. So we hope that this will give us better results on some of our biological experiments where we can track the nanotubes as they go through different uh, tissues and organs in testes. We have another category of experiments where we will make use not of the continuous but of the, the pulsed output of the Thai sapphire laser to have very high excitation powers on individual nanotubes and thereby generate multiple excitons on the nanotube at once. And by studying these high intensity excitation processes, we can see how the, net, how the excitons annihilate each other, look for nonlinearities in the output fluorescence of the nanotube uh, as a function of the input power and wavelength. And in this way we get a better handle on the exciton dynamics and uh, exciton-exciton interaction processes in the nanotubes. So expand our photophysical knowledge of the processes. And each, each type has its own emission wavelength and its own absorption wavelength. So you can see that there are a whole lot of them. It's a complex thing. Uh, for, the, for the excitation side here, uh, so we're going to be going from like 710 with this system up to as far as we can. And if we can go up to 900 nanometers and 920, then we can get all of these uh, nanotubes excited. Uh, so the further we can go into the infrared, the better. Going to longer wavelengths also gives us the ability to excite some of the nanotubes, the smallest diameter ones, in their longest wavelength excitations for further study. So that's the idea. Uh, so, and the answer to your question is, the further we can get, the more nanotubes we can capture. And so this is about 960, but then there's some more, like this one is at nine, about 900. So, if we can get to 900, actually, that would be, that'd be a good, a good range. Requirements for the, our experiments are pretty modest. So, if we can get 30 milliwatts, as I said, we can do a whole lot of experiments with it. That's in the CW mode. Probably less power is necessary. Okay.